Okay, hello everyone. So I'm gonna start today's lecture. Today we're gonna to look at a server interaction. Um, so basically, you know, um, a lot of the thing, like, you know, in, in general at web programming, there's always um, server, right? Right, I mean, the, for example, I mean, but like what Simon 3 or 4, we've been using our local computer as a server. And, but typically when you go to website, typically it's the result of you or web browser requesting a file and then <clears throat> like you get a response, like the web browser get a response from the file, uh, from the server <clears throat> and then HTML file get rendered. Um, and then you can see what you're seeing on the web browser. Um, but like, you know, what can we do more? So like, this is like pretty basic, you know, relationship between browser and web server. When you make a request to, let's say, um, so like, you know, get the HTML file and then you get a response and then like web browser will parse them and then web browser will figure out other requests requests that they um, the web browser needs to make. For example, image or uh, media files. Those are another request that you have to make, or even jQuery uh, that you include in the HTML file. So those are one. Uh, those are the ones that you have to make request. Um, so yeah, I mean, for example. Let's go to cs.vt.edu. And then it's not just one file, but there are a bunch of, you know, um, external library or image that you, that the computer, I mean, the web browser has to make a request. And if you go to inspector, you'll be able to see how many requests that it makes uh, in the network setting, network tab. So let me refresh the page. Um, I'm gonna press command R and then you can see lots of, like each bar here is request and then how long it takes to get a response for each request. So these are the, this is the very first thing that you know, I make a request, but then it is using jQuery, Bootstrap, some, you know, JavaScript that I don't really know, and SVG file, probably icons, and then images. And these are the request URL. Method is get, status is 200, which means okay, um, and so forth. Okay, so this is good, but like, you know, like, but we need to do some more complex, like we wanna do complex tasks in um, web browsers, right? Like what if, what if I want to log into Facebook? You would have to not just request the page, Facebook page, but also you would have to send requests to, like send some sort of information, for example, your ID and password. So here, let me see if I can add. So some information should be um, passed from your, the page that you're using to a web server. Um, the other the interesting thing is that, you know, um, like whenever you search something in Google, um, it's going to be, it's going to suggest keywords, like complete keywords. So for example, um, so if I go to Google, once I type something, oh, I should get rid of this. Um, so coronavirus, um, and then it's going to suggest a lot of different things. Um, so how does it work? Like, because it's actually sending each letter by letter. So how to, and then this is to show me what I've been searching. 
and these are the like uh, like popular keywords that people search and this is not something coming from my own computer this is something that google has in their server um, so yeah maybe we can do something like why virginia tech and then see what people um search and then you can see that why Virginia Tech is like, you can see that Virginia Tech is better than UVA. <laughs> That's interesting. Anyway, okay, so these are all interaction between um, browser and server. And then we're gonna um, find, uh, learn uh, ways to interact with server from client, um, from HTML page that we have been developing. Um, so yeah, so the very basic, um very basic thing that we need to know is um basically html uh, tag called form uh is probably the most um preliminary way to send uh, a request a more detailed request just more than um <clears throat> just uh requesting a file so form is basically uh, HTML tag, and then you can put input elements, and then whatever input elements um, that are inside this form element will be grouped as a data that you will, will pass to a server or to a certain uh, URL. So forms have a, a method and an action, and method is either get or post and then there's some other method as well such as uh, delete and put but like mm, I've, I've not been like well, basically get and post is good enough for us and then like even deleting and putting those can be done by get and post as well um, and then the action is basically a target page to send data um, so let me fix this. Um, and then input a HTML tag, there are lots of, lots of lots of different types and more than 20. And but you can think of it something like button, checkboxes, write a button, password, submit button. Basically, it's kind of like a widget in um, in HTML. So let's just check what kinds of input elements we have. Um, so you have button, checkbox, color. Oh, color, I didn't know they even have a color. So let's check out color. So this is, if I click it, I get this nice color picker. And then if I submit, I get this um, hex code of the color. That's pretty cool. Okay, so color, uh, date, email, and so forth. Password, radio. Radio is like radio button um, where you have to pick one from the group. Okay, so this is uh, input elements and then whatever input elements inside the form and when you press like a submit button it's going to pass to um, the target page. Um, so we will got to look at this two different methods, get and post. Uh, you can think of it as a, um, basically we can, as the name suggests, get is getting data, fetching data. Um, and post is writing data. So, but still, like when you want to fetch certain data, you want to be able to pass some data, like, you know, pass some parameter from client to server. For example, um, like the, the keystroke that you have been making in Google search keyword form, um, like each key letter should be passed to the server, right? Um, so there are certain characteristics of get, like, you know, get is um, one of the 
unique thing is that, that the form data will be visible in the pages address field, basically in URL. Um, so that, you know, URL with parameters can be saved. Um, and so basically, let me actually show you. I mean, like I'll be able to show you what it means. So, um, but then like the data, amount of data that you can send is limited. So you can only send up to, um, to 20, 48 characters. And then you should not use it for private or sensitive data because it's not secure and then it's visible in URL. But it's good that because it can be bookmarked, you know, uh, basically it's the same thing as um, the URL with parameters can be saved. So let me just merge these two. The post is, you know, because it's about writing data, there's no limitation in terms of size and then it's more secure and then like it's not a visible. So yeah, I mean, in, in the form, we're gonna look at it later, but form, um, any kind of server side programming language will be able to get like whatever um, data that is passed from this form element. Um, either using um, like, you know, URL parameters, like, you know, um, or hidden data um, that is uh, embedded in the post request. So let's look at the get method a little bit in, uh, in, in more detail. So you might have seen these kind of URL. Um, this is like a fake URL that I made, but basically you might have seen something like this, um, this um, question mark, and then there's certain parameters, and there's ampersand, and then another parameter. So these are actually um, what happened, like this is what happened when you send data using form. Um, and using get method. Um, so, so everything after profile that I simulate, like, you know, um, if I get rid of it. So starting from question mark, these are um, parameters that was passed using get method. So, uh, Yes, so this is basically um, kind of like a divider where these part uh, is a URL and this is like a parameter that um, get method is path passing. So start with question mark and then it has format, specific format and which is this is name and this is value and again name and then value, and then you can have multiple parameters uh, separated by this um, ampersand. So yeah, and then you might have seen these sort of, I don't know, um, URL, a lot of different places. One thing that I could imagine is uh, any kind of website. Uh, let's go to website. What's a good website to go? Um, how about Roy.com? Because I've been looking at backpacks here. Uh, so here I don't see anything, but let's go to backpack. Do we have backpack? Okay. Maybe not. Maybe I'll look for a backpack. And you can see that this URL has um, URL part. This is basically URL, but then there's two parameters. Q is backpack and page size is 90. So basically it's gonna tell you, hey, um, you can kind of guess what these are. Like basically this is what I type. Let me type something else. Um, what else is? 
good for, let me try every day backpack. Now I get only one thing, which is cool, you know, <laughs> but I, I guess I want to do something else. Skis, let's do skis. And then even without like using search, like search form, I could, I, I'm able to retrieve um, or fetch search result. And then probably 90 means that uh, number of uh, products in a page. So right now you can see that I it's using 90. What if I use five? Will I get five? Nope. It's gonna change it to 90 because I guess they only allow 30, 60, 90. So you can see that these two are um, this is like this is um, different from the other two. So what if I change it to thirty? And now this is gonna. Um, do I have thirty? It's kind of hard to see, but you can see that it's not going to. Um, let me <laughs> change the URL parameter. What about sorting? So let me if I if I to price low to high. Now you can see that there's another parameter, sort is equal to mean price. And then I can see the, the cheapest product in this search result. What if I change to max, and I'm gonna be able to hopefully get the most expensive one in this search result. What else do we have? Best selling. And then you can see that, you know, oh, they, Best, like you know, ch by changing the URL parameter, you can change how the search result is um, sorted. So you know, um, but you can see that that these like URL parameters are um, probably they're using get uh, and maybe form possibly. Let me see if they're using, they're using form. So. Let's select the sky and then it's inside this form. So, and then you can see that it's using get method, which is why we're using this URL parameters and then action, which means that the target page is slash search, which means that um, it's going to send this request to um, this search URL search, which is that by default, it's gonna add its current um, URL and then it's going to add search. Okay, so, and you know, any kind of, like a lot of websites use this get method, probably Amazon uses too. You can see just, I just ordered uh, Amigo, but Let's see. And then you can see this URL parameters. And then, yeah, there are how many parameters we have. So we have encoding with the value of which is ETFF, ETF8, which I don't know what it means. Um, reference RD. Um, and so forth. Probably the most um, famous um, URL parameter that you probably know well is YouTube, watch, V, and then you've got these um, video ID. So this is basically video ID, and then if I change it to something else, I'll be able to see other things, other videos. Okay, what if I change it to random thing? Okay, video on unavailable. Okay, interesting. So I realized I lost my slides. 
So this is URL parameters that is passed by get um, method. And then by, by default, like, you know, requesting static files from um, website is like get, uh, get method. So I don't know if you remember this, but if you go to network, um, a lot of the request that has been made is basically uh, using get method. So let's say you can see the request method was get and then they got the, they got what they want because of this, which, which this green light indicates. All right, so. Um, so then sometimes you want to get these URL parameters and then, um, the, or like some people call it query string, query string. Um, and then because it has to be embedded in URL, you need to escape like special character like spaces or some other language. So for example, like you might've seen something like, you know, let's go to ray.com again. Uh, I don't know why I got stopped, but let's say um, men's belt. And then you can see that this um, single quotation, like apostrophe is replaced with this um, special character, like, you know, like some code. And it's because it cannot take this as a URL. And then you can see it's automatically changing. If I put space, it's going to change to something else. And obviously if I use, if I start to use like question mark, like men's shoes, question mark, obviously question mark cannot be used because of the, like it's uh, original use, like dedicated for this uh, URL parameters. Now you can see this replaced with this uh, percent three F. So, like whenever you want to include these letters, you have to encode URL or decode URL. So, uh, and then there's JavaScript function that is um, available for that. Um, and PHP has a similar thing and then any kind of, you know, um, server side language will have that as well. Um, so probably there's gonna be some URL encoding um, online testing. So let's say space and question mark code. And I'm going to get this um, percent 20 is probably for space and percent three F is probably for um, the question mark. And also any kind of um, non English letters like Korean, Chinese letter, or some um, Western language that has like dot on top of the alphabet, those needs to be converted to um, these codes. So let's check, let me check, let me try Korean because I can type Korean quickly. Um, Then if I encode, I get a bunch of this character, which represent this um, string that I wrote and probably don't know what it means, um, but that's what it means at the moment. Uh, um, that's what I wrote, but you don't know what it means. Um, but I can guess that I could find this space somewhere, which was percent 20. Um, and then we have question mark and another um, space at the end. So, yeah. Okay, so that's that. So 
like there's di like different ways to get these um, URL parameters using JavaScript or any kind of server-side language. We'll be able to int like you know get these URL parameters, and then we'll revisit this later because today we're not going to worry about anything uh, anything about like server-side programming. So uh, we're going to save that for next lecture. But you know. In JavaScript, basically, this particular um, variable is available, which is available for any kind of um, any web engine, is going to return URL. So let's go back to Ray, and then I open Inspector Console, make it bigger. So window was the I just forgot window location dot href okay window location location and then href is going to basically let you have um, let you ret retrieve whatever that is typed in URL address bar. And then like you, what you need to do is just to get these, like, you know, what is the value of Q? What is the value of page size? Like that um, you should be able to write a program that may like manipulate string to get the value of each um, parameter. So let's do a demo. So what I'm going to do is, open my atom.io. So let's start with this form. So this is basically nothing at the moment. So let me actually make it bigger and then open it in the web browser. So it has nothing, but I'm gonna say form, let's say H1 form example. And then I'm gonna create a form um, for now, it has nothing. Um, so let's create some input element. Um, before that, let's create a label. Uh, what's a good one? Name. So one of the things that we should know is that any input elements need to know or uh, needs to have name, which is essentially um, what is uh, like name is what 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 these um, these are like when you when you see this um, URL that includes get parameters. Let me go back to simple ones. So Q is name of input field, and page size is another name of the uh, another parameter, and sort is the name. So you always need name attribute in input parameter. Um, so let's say input uh, name is equal to first name and then type of what I have to say text box and then saved it I go back to form now I have one text box right but we want some label, I guess. So in label, uh, let's say this is for first name, so that I know that these two matches. First name and you can see that input tag is empty. Um, it does not take content, but like label does say I need to 
Fix the typo. And yes, something like this. I guess I want some line breaks. So let's try to create first name, last name, and maybe email. But then I would have to change the um, name and type. So this is going to be now last name. And then it's going to be still text. I'm going to say this is email. And then now is the type itself is email. So let me see. Okay, so my name is Sang One. It's my first name, Lee, and then my email address is bt.edu. And then what do I do with it? Like I probably have to submit it. So I'm gonna create a button that's basically submit, type has to be submit. And then if I do that, it's gonna have a button. So cool, so send one Lee and email. And if I submit, what's gonna happen is that it's going to actually um, like submit this form to the target. So by default, so, so like, like, I don't know if you remember that, that uh, we have the same thing in assignment three, uh, which is going to refresh the page um, and then come back to this uh, original, um, I mean, the, the come back to this uh, HTML file. So you can see that now my address URL has this thing that was typed. So you can see if I type, hey, let's say John Doe and John Doe at vt.edu. So if I submit it, I get these value. Um, and then this is a new page, like, like by default. Um, like the page, web page was refreshed um, whenever um, a user clicked a submit button, but this value is coming from the previous page. So let me try one more time. Jane Doe. Um, Jane. Okay, submit. And I get this nice value that was passed from the previous page. So you can see that by default form use get method, but you can use post, like, you know, post method as well. So if I use post, what's gonna happen is that, so let me just get rid of it. So hello, name, name, oh, let me, John, O N, JD and VT.edu. If I submit it, you can see that not, because I'm using post method, I don't get these uh, URL parameters. So let me go back to get. Um, John Doe JD submit, and I get this. URL parameters back because I'm now using get method. Um, the other thing that is that uh, I didn't specify action. So by default action is gonna be the page that you're in, but I can send it to something else. So I'm gonna send it to receiver.html. And then I have this receiver.html like that's basically have, that has nothing in it. So let me actually open it. So 
So it has nothing, and then it doesn't have any URL parameter. But now if I send something, if I submit it, oh, okay, interesting. I might have not saved something. Now target is receiver. So let's try one more time. Submit it. Now it's going to receiver. That HTML with this URL parameter passed from the um, from the form that HTML. So how can I use this? So let's try to get this URL parameters and then use it to display um, the certain I mean content in this page. So I'm gonna go back and then I have this nice jQuery ready. So let's put some scripts. A document, when document is ready. Uh, I'm gonna call function. And let's just say hello. Oops, what happened? Okay. Alerts. Interesting. Hey, why don't I have this? Oh, I was adding this script to form HTML, not the receiver HTML. So I'm going to add this here, save it, save it. And if I refresh, I get a hello. So let's try to get these URL parameters. How would I get it? So if you go back to site, I added an example of no, someone getting parameters. So I'm just gonna get use their thing. But basically you can see that they have this helper function, get prompts, and then it's going to pass URL. Um, and then it's gonna create an object, empty object. I don't exactly what the, what this is. Parser the href. Okay. So okay. So I don't know why they're doing this, but it's they're creating this HTML element, uh, a element, and then set href to URL that is passed. So let's, um, and then basically what they're doing is getting um, this M percent and split them by equal sign and then decode them uh, and pair is basically the first one, so name is the pair zero and then the value is pair one because it's always matched and then this is split by this equal sign. So let's try this guy and see if it works. So what I'm gonna do is get prompts and window.location.href because we would have to pass and then it's gonna return object. So let's print it out. So let me go back 
and then submit and then open the inspector. I have this nice uh, object that is printed with this console.log. And they can see um, all the URL parameters that, um, that this page uh, received from the previous page. So yeah, I mean, then you can use this uh, things to generate some HTML elements. So you can say, hey, uh, instead of what did I receive? My name is, and then create like a empty element, whole name. And then what else? My email is email. And then once I have these guys, uh, let me get this object. By the way, they, they are using a lot of var. Let me actually change it to let. Which <laughs> is it, um, accidentally changed their uh, variable name as well. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm I know because I know there's going to be object dot first name inside, so I'm going to select um, full name of that dollar sign hashtag full name and then set text to, so basically text is like setter and getter, um, object dot first name plus um, one space object dot last name. Saved it and then let's try this okay, one more time. So I get this nice um, full name. So what if I change it to Sang and then refresh the page, you can see that I can dynamically change the content using these URL parameters. Let's complete the email as well. So I'm gonna just copy this email. It's gonna be email and I don't need this. Okay, so and then you can imagine that you can do all sorts of things like you know you can create like a a tag with mail to my email address and so forth. So yeah, this is basically form, which is kind of I don't know preliminary way to pass certain data from web page to a server. And then what we have done is like, you know, there's no server in this demo because we are sending this to, um, we were sending this to receiver.html, but this could be anything. Like this could be receiver.php and then that PHP file is going to take this input and do something and generate HTML elements. Um, or it could be just URL, let's say, add like, you know, um, I don't know, um, search for example. And then that's uh, basically it's going to add the search. This, this, this is relative pass by the way. So it's going to add search in the current URL and then pass these uh, parameters and do something out of it. Okay, so if I don't forget, let me actually Post these two HTML files in the in Canvas. How are we doing in time? I do not remember when I started, but I'm guessing we have some more time. Um, and then we're gonna look at Ajax today. So Ajax is it stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Um, 
but this is probably the main way um, that we're gonna create dynamic website. So form is kind of, you know, it's useful. It's useful to uh, type something in a form, like, you know, search keywords, and then it has its use. And then you might have seen something like contact us form where you have like, you pipe, type your ID, I mean, name and email address and then content and then press submit button and that's gonna send something like some sort of email. Um, something like contact us form example. And then basically these, all of these are using um, this kind of thing. These are using um, form, I, I believe. But one of the, one of the downside of form is that you kind of always have to send something to different URL, which means that you will have to re refresh the page and then it's going to go to that URL. So, but then Ajax is like, you know, something um, different, like basically it's a technique for accessing web server from a web page. It's, you know, you know, it's kind of similar to form, but then the key difference is that you are sending certain data programmatically, not using HTML tag, but like using JavaScript. So name is kind of misleading. Ajax is not a program language. It's more of a, um, I don't know, more of a method of sending data from a client or a page to a server. And it has XML, but like it could be anything. It could be a text file, it could be JSON, probably could be binary file as well. We could, given that we can post file from a client to a server. Um, it's a combination of a JavaScript object called XML HTTP request. And then, you know, the data that you get from DOM tree or to display something. So this is basically what people use whenever you want to send data from web page to server using JavaScript. So what's cool about it? Like, like basically it's like why, why, why the reason why we used Ajax is because of the better user experience. So you might have seen a lot of website that update itself. For example, Facebook, you know, I don't know if you log into Facebook, like when you first um, open Facebook, there's like some template sort of thing that looks like it's going to show you a picture, but then it's gonna take some time to load the actual contents so that, you know, you, you can kind of see the Facebook page and then wait for the actual content. Um, and then like, you know, Facebook does not load, you know, like the newsfeed, for example, or Twitter even, it's infinite, right? If you keep scrolling, it's gonna keep like, you know, fetching data, but then it does not fetch all the data from the beginning. It's just gonna wait until we scroll and then if we get close to the bottom, it's going to fetch another data and so forth. Like, so let's check that out in Twitter. So this is my Twitter. But then you can see that initially there's no content, but you can see that this like, um, this sort of progress bar, not progress bar, like circular prog progress um, icon that tell, that's telling me that I'm like, the, it's fetching the data. So you can see the scroll bar, um, it has this amount of data, but if I start to scroll, you know, go back to the bottom, I can never reach the end, right? Because it's just gonna keep fetching from server and then you can see this scroll bar region is like smaller than before and so forth, you know. So this is how dynamically, 
how a web page dynamically load uh, more data from server if it needs to. Um, the other example is basically, you know, the Google search um, keyword, um, but it basically it's not like, like, like once I start to type how to in, in search bar, it's going to try to suggest keyword, but it's not like my computer knows like those search keywords. It is the server and then the web page is um, to, um, actively interacting with um, the Google server. So it's not my computer, this is basically wrong. Um, so Ajax allows web page to update it, to be updated asynchronously by exchanging small amounts of data with the server behind the scenes. So what do I mean by asynchronously? It means that, again, synchronous is blocking the code, blocking the process, which means that um, if it makes a request to a server, and then if it's synchronous, the website that I'm using is not going to work and it's going to hang it's kind of it's kind of freeze until it gets response from the server um so that's a synchronous case but we don't want that like you know we want to be able to use facebook like while it's downloading its content from the server as we scroll like you know and then it's like same thing for any kind of website like we want to have a because it's perceivably faster right even though it's not going to make the network traffic time faster, but like for the user, it's going to be, um, it's going to make a huge difference because while we're waiting for responses, they can still interact with the website. So this means that it is possible to update parts of the web page without reloading the whole page, like form. Um, and then it helps build perceivably faster dynamic and interactive website. Okay, so this is how Ajax works. So basically any kind of Ajax request is going to be made in browser. So this is like we're using UI and then certain, some sort of event is going to call um, you know, Ajax call, like, you know, trigger a certain function. For example, if I click button or if I type something in a search keyword, that's going to make a Ajax call uh, in the like uh, JavaScript that is included in the um, HTML file. And then it's, so, so let me draw. So there gotta be some event here, right? could be click or it could be mouse function, like mouse over, but like whatever event that is detected by JavaScript file is going to create this uh, XML HTTP request. And then it's going to send a request to the server and the server side, we do not know what's going on for now, but there could be some server side language like PHP, servlet, it's pretty outdated one, but something like Node.js, um, which we're gonna look at a little bit today. And then there could be some database like, you know, MySQL or MongoDB and so forth. For example, like, um, there are a lot of websites that you can log in without refreshing the page, right? So, and then it's going to return XML data or not necessarily XML, but it could be, uh, we could return JSON data or it could be just simple text or it could be binary. And then it's gonna call the callback function. Callback function is basically what should happen when the response is received by the client web page. So this is how um, this whole process went from the moment that you make uh, the web browser make a request and until it get responses, there's gonna be delay, right? This is gonna be, create a delay. Like typically it's perceivably very short, 
um, like certain like a hundredth of millisecond, but then like you not being able to use like for, but for example like if web server is down it's never gonna um, get a response like you know typically HTML um, HTTP request will have timeout function so that once it doesn't get a response for um, certain time it's just gonna give up but during the time this web page is gonna work that's what I mean by asynchronous. Is I better buy a Wacom tablet? Um, by the way, anyway, so if it's synchronous, that means that you're not going to be able to use. Um, you're not going to be able to use the website while you get a response, and then what? What? Who knows? Like, if the server is down, that means that you're never going to be able to use your web, like website with the website again until it timeouts. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can see this like how much delay that you can, it takes from the inspector in general. Um, let's go back to the CS website. Oops, what happened? So CS website, the network, if I refresh. No, this is not. Any, um, so, what I wanted to show you is how long it takes to get this image. For example, it made a request, and how long did it take? Response, timing. So, this was sent, and then it took 108.75 milliseconds. And then it took, um, the download was pretty quick. So this is how long it took. And then it was queuing. So you, this is the total time that it takes to wait for this um, image. So like, you know, if you have like, this is like 500 milliseconds, which is basically um, like half a second, right? Like, but imagine these were synchronous and then imagine that we have 10 images like this. That means that we're going to have to wait for five seconds until we, we, uh, until we can use the website. But thing, you can see that things are happening asynchronously here even. Um, so let me refresh. And a lot of the requests that are made is uh, made in parallel. So you can see that um, these are like asynchronous, right? So if it was synchronous, it's gonna be like, you know, one, um, let me see if I can draw. It's like one bar after another, another, and another. But because it's synchronous, like it creates like a lot of different requests whenever it's possible. And then server is gonna respond and then they get back and then render the web page. Okay, so where were we? So Ajax call has like two elements, a request and response. And the request uh, is very similar to form uh, it's going to have target URL. It, you have to choose method, uh, either get or post. Um, and then you're going to have request header. And then in the request header, you can set up like what kind of data that you're sending. And then it's going to have callback function, which means that what it's going to do once you receive a response. So the callback function is essential for asynchronous call. And, you know, because once you make a request, like right, like let's say in the JavaScript, you know, let's say you made a request, and then next line, in the next line that uh, in JavaScript, it doesn't mean that you have a response back. Um, so unless it's asynchronous. So to make sure that you want to do something 
uh, if, like if you want to render a certain thing based on the response, and then you want to make sure that response is available, you have to do it inside this callback function. And I'm going to show you the example. Um, and then you have a response, obviously, and response have, have some important property. Ready state, um, it's going to start from zero and then increment one by one, uh, one, two, three, four. Um, and then four means that the response, uh, response is back. And status, and then you are familiar with these like numbers, like where 404 is kind of um, famous one where um, there are a lot of memes about 404, I guess. Bad request, 404 memes. Yeah, these sort of things. I mean, they have a interesting website of, uh, uh, this is basically all kinds of um, HTTP status, like 100 is continue, 200 is like typical thing that we see, okay. 201, 202, 203, non authoritative information, no content. 400 are something when something goes bad, like bad. 400 is bad request. Um, 404 is not found. And, you know, 420, I didn't know 420 was there. Uh, yeah, but basically, typically what we need is, what was that? Did I say a hot tub? Okay, I thought not a lot. Okay, but basically these are the status number that we should be familiar with, uh, like 100, uh, no, 200 is the basic one when things are working fine. And then 400 is something that you can, um, when you're doing, when you're, you know, creating a server-side program, you may want to use 400 because like, you know, maybe there are certain thing, like let's say you did sanity check and then um, there are certain things that are wrong in the parameter, you might want to issue a bad request. Um, and then if things are not ready, we have to issue 404 and so forth. Okay. So this is one example of creating uh, Ajax call in JavaScript way. So let me actually explain what it, what it means. So like this is basically a function and obviously you would have to call this function to make the call. I mean, make the Ajax call. So later you would have to have function call like this. Otherwise, it's just a function declare, declaration. So, yes, this is basically an object that you need. And then we talked about XML HTTP request is the object that is going to be, uh, that, that is going to make a function call. And then uh, it, the, so this is name of the variable. And then XML HTTP request has a property called on ready state changes, change, uh, which is basically a callback function that is that runs whenever the state changes from zero, zero to one, uh, one to two, and then two to three, and three to four, and then four is the only, uh, four is the one that that we know that responses came back. So um, like typically we want to check if this, if this is for, and then that's what they're doing. So this is callback function. So what are they checking? They're checking whether they got response back uh, and then their ready state uh, can, uh, is going to have this uh, state number. And then status like 200 meant okay, right? So if these two are true, what they're gonna do is um, change this inner HTML with the response text. So what were they respond like requesting? What they were requesting is 
they're using method, get method, and then this is the URL that they are um, requesting to. So this is target, this is method, and this is basically asynchronous is equal to true, which means that they're going to um, use asynchronously. If false, it means that uh, they're going to do it synchronously. And then you finally have to send it. So that's the typical, um, you know, JavaScript way to do it. And obviously you can use JavaScript if you want to, but um, again, we are going to find, I mean, we're going to use uh, jQuery. Like we're going to look at the example that used jQuery. And if I can save it, clear. Okay, so this is jQuery, right? Looks pretty simple, um, simpler in general. So let's see what they're doing. So basically this is event handling, right? Like this is uh, when button is clicked, they're gonna run this function and the function is this guy over here. And then that has nothing to do with uh, Ajax call yet. But inside this function, what they're gonna do is um, they're gonna call Ajax call. So dollar sign dot and Ajax is going to be a function that takes parameters. What kind of parameters that they get? So this is end of the parenthesis. One, um, they take uh, one object. So this is matching with this guy. Uh, so inside this object, they have URL, comma, and success function. So this is callback function that is going to be executed. <laughs> this is getting pretty complicated. So they have one object, right, as a parameter and they have two um, key value pairs. So the first one is URL, and then this is the URL. The second one is success, uh, which is gonna be callback function which, um, that runs when the Ajax request succeeded. So this is the callback function. And then when it gets the result, and then like the callback function is going to take a pass, uh, well, it's going to have a parameter called result. And basically it's setting up with, uh, like setting the HTML with result. Um, so this is Ajax uh, function and you can specify method in, as part of the parameter, but like they didn't specify it, which means that they can use get method, but they have like a, separate function for get and post. So here, post is a function, and then this is a target URL, and this is data that they are passing to the server, and then this is the callback function, which is gonna run when, um, you know, the request is ready. Request, um, they got response. Um, and then obviously you can imagine that um, jQuery have, will have a get function as well. So let's check out the get function. jQuery Ajax call get. Let's use this guy. So oh, and then you can see URL callback, and it does not send data because the URL can contain um, URL parameters. So um, I guess they don't have an example, but you know, 
you can put URL parameters as part of this um, URL string. And then this is callback function, which is gonna run when they get a response. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, hopefully simple demo. And then one tricky thing for you is that um, we need a server to be able to um, test Ajax call because Ajax call, you know, being able to like, you know, like Ajax call to local HTML file is blocked because of the security reason. You know, obviously imagine that um, if any website can access your file, that's going to be problematic, right? So like if some hacker create a website and that's going to, you know, browse all your folder and then like retrieve all the files that you have in local computer, that's like a problematic. So Ajax um, cannot be tested in local files. So, so I have to create this um, simple, um, simple Node.js server just for the sake of demonstration. But like, don't worry about the server part today. Um, but like, we're just going to look at this um, um, example. So this is basically um, server that I'm running. So let me check if the server is running. So how do I run server? This is server is listening at this uh, local host 8081. And then uh, don't worry about this, and so we're going to look at it next week. So if I go to this website, I have this nice um, HTML file, uh, which is going to be that index.html that has nothing more than uh, these two elements. So what am I going to do? So I'm going to do, um, let's do, let's do, uh, JavaScript way of making HTML um, request. So let's go back here. Um, and then it is coming from XCall, D3S schools. So I'm going to add this URL so that you can get the text. Let me just grab this guy. So, and then, oh, so I would rather put it outside the document ready function. So what it, what is it doing? So it's going to create HTTP and then it's gonna have callback function and then wait until um, they get response and then they got okay sign and they're gonna set um, the HTML um, with the whatever text that they received. And I don't know if you'd see this, uh, but I got this hello text file ready. So I'm gonna say hello text. Um, and then once it's ready, um, we don't have anything that has ID equal uh, to demo. So I'm gonna create H1 and then ID is equal to demo. And then I'm gonna say this is demo. So let's save it. And then if I refresh the page, I get this. Um, and I didn't make any request yet because I didn't call this function. But let's check out the order of um, order of uh, execution. So let's say console.log 
and then log talk start um, and then at the end log talk ended and then I'm gonna put console message inside this on ready state change and I'm gonna say state changed and then print out the uh, ready state okay so you can see this is the function that I have to call inside document ready um, then you know initially this is demo but then what should happen is that uh, once they uh, once it gets response, it's going to replace the inner HTML with this response text. And the response text is supposed to be whatever returned by this text function. So, um, hello world could be a fairly good things to do. So, let's refresh it. And then I got hello world, right? And then let's open the console to see what happened. side by side and then console and then you can see load duck started and then state change to one and then end it state change to two and three and four which means that it took more time to get response um, than it took time to finish this load duck function so again we were printing out the message whenever a state changes. So it's gonna have from zero to four. And then we print out another message when the function ended. Um, and then by default zero does not like, um, it starts with zero, so zero is not printed because it, it this function is called when, uh, you know, Uh, when it changes from zero to one, if you want to see zero, what probably what could, we could have done, what could have done is then um, XHTTP ready state. And then you can see that this, where I'm using this um, uh, keyword, this keyword, because like the, the, the object that is running this function is this guy, XHTTP. Of course we can use this guy, H is gonna be the same hopefully but like problem with this is better. Okay, so let's try this again. Console. What happened? Okay, so started zero, one, ended, and two, three, four. And then you can see that hello world is changed. I mean, like, you know, hello world is appeared from the text file. We can change the thing. Hello. Is thirty-seven forty-four. Then we can change the thing, change the content depending on the server um, content. So let me create a just for the sake of. Um, seeing like I'm showing that this was in the beginning was like this this was the initial state i'm gonna like create like an arbitrary um, delay by having lots of lots of iteration what do i do um Uh, okay, so let's create count and then just increment count. So this is going to, like, it's going to take some time to run this for loop so that you can see once it get responses and then there's going to, the program is going to spend some time to uh, compute this one and then change the thing so that you can see both state, initial state, which is going to show you this is demo, and then hello, CS3744. So 
So let me refresh. Oops. I have error. So let me refresh again. This is demo. How long it's gonna take? Now it's hang or, or like the program hangs, so I cannot even select the text. And then you can see it's still running. I probably have too many numbers. Um, and I guess my computer is not fast enough to do it in a um, quick moment. Let me actually get rid of some zeros. So refresh. Oh my God, this is hanging. <laughs> Let it, uh, let it like, does it work? I'm gonna just open it in a different, different tab. It was pretty quick. You can now, you will not able to see it. Let me add two more zero. Maybe that was too much. One less zero. Oh, now it got changed. So let's try here. And then you see the delay. So this is what synchronous like website will look like. So I can select these uh, websites, but while I'm waiting, I'm not gonna be able to select it because it's, it hangs. So you cannot, you cannot see, you can see that I'm not able to select this uh, text. Interesting, so it's still running. I think I made a wrong choice. How would I stop it? I can put a breakpoint or um, how would I stop it? I would have to close it and then open it again. Okay, so that was the demo of JavaScript way. I feel like we're running over time again, but I'm gonna show you a quick example of more advanced one. So I'm gonna create a server that adds to number. Um, I don't know if we need a server to add to number, but you know, it's a simplest example that I pick up. So what I'm gonna do is, Let's get rid of this guy. And then we're gonna use JavaScript, I mean the jQuery for this. So let's say I'm gonna create a form. Uh, actually, like we don't need form anymore because we don't, we're not gonna send a request using the form. We just need a two input. And the name is gonna be A. And then type is gonna be text. And then another one is gonna be B, label for A. So what I'm creating is um, simple Um, addition. So if I go back, I have this two input field. Um, I forgot to put label. So now we have two. So let's say what I'm gonna do is whenever something is clicked, button, 
like this button that has no label, so I'm going to say value. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is make an Ajax call to a server to add two numbers. So let's add a click handler to this button. Let me create an ID to select it. Oh, add button. Um, and then I'm going to say alert for now. So hello. So it's working. Uh, the event handler is working. So what I'm going to do is create an Ajax call to server. And then um, let me do some cheating. So jQuery. Ajax all get oh because oh the, okay uh, this was jQuery.com but I'm gonna use one from W3S school just for the sake of consistency. So these are the methods that, that are available. So I'm gonna use get. Um, and then let's grab this guy. Um, and then I'm, so I would have to explain a little bit about the server. So the server that I'm running here is going to, it looks complicated, basically have two oops, uh, URL that responds to it. So it's going to be add and then another one add, but it's using post. So let's actually differentiate them, add get, add post. So add get is going to get a request and then look at its query string or URL parameters and then get, it's going to expect A and B and then it's going to add them together and then send me an, an um, object that has answer and then like the value of answer will be like summation of those two. And then I had to, because it's going to be string, I would have to change it to integer. And then this is uh, changing the object into a JSON JavaScript notation, but like we're going to talk about it later, but don't worry about it today. But like what it's going to look for is this URL. So I'm going to grab this and then go back to index.html. And then add get is the URL that I'm looking for. Um, and then I would have to provide URL parameter. So A will equal to two. Let's just try hard code number. B is equal to three and save it. And if I refresh, and check out the inspector. So what was the, so okay, this is URL and then this is the callback function. And then once it gets right uh, response, it was supposed to alert me with the data, but it, it didn't. So I'm just, I'm just gonna look at what's going on. Um, Oops. Okay, so it's running. Oh, oh it's, it's gonna run only when I, click, when I click it. Okay, so I'm gonna click add and then I got error because I get, oh, 404. Okay, so it's not found, <laughs> interestingly, because it's because I modify um, this address and then did not restart the server. So I'm going to restart the server and then refresh and then add button. 
now I get, I got the object and the status is success. So let's see what kind of object that I got. Um, by using debugger. So I'm gonna look at what this guy is. Um, so I got, um, this program is stopped at this line and I'm gonna go to console. And then evaluate this data. So data is basically five. So this is exactly how this um, server was supposed to respond. It was re supposed to respond to 100, which means that um, we got okay sign. And then we're gonna set up the content type like header. And then they're saying that, hey, JSON object, JSON um, string, which we're gonna talk about later in this lecture. Um, what else? And then it was sending this object that has answer. So if I change the thing to result, uh, and then re re start the, restart the server, and then refresh the page, and then alert, and then they, now data has result instead of answer because I just changed the format. Okay, so what we need to do is simply, instead of alert, we want to um, display the result. So let's create the result. So I'm gonna say h1 result id result the result is um and create an empty object empty, empty span element And then once I get a result response from the server, what I'm gonna do is update the result content with data dot result because that's what uh, the, the where the result is. Um, the other thing that I want to do is instead of just using two and three, I'm gonna get this data from A and B. So I'm gonna say, hey, let URL is equal to this. And, and then you, you're gonna use it. I'm gonna use URL and instead of two and three hard coded number, I'm gonna get data from these um, elements, which is, um, we don't have ID yet, or we could probably select the thing with name, which I don't recall well, but let me try. Input name equal to A, possibly. And then how to get value, this is gonna be val, um, which probably what you used in the um, assignment three. And now it's gonna be B. And let me check if this is correct by putting the poker. So three and 56, nothing happens. Interesting. Something is wrong. Okay. This I need plus sign. Okay. So if I three, nine, add, 
and then let's resume and then check out the URL and then I think we got nice results oh so we got three and nine from this and then let's put a breakpoint here and then resume and it's going to make an ajax call and then let the server calculate and it got result 12 and then it's going to update this um html so yeah we got we create this nice i don't know calculator <laughs> let me get rid of debugger and then you can see that we are not updating updating the website. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen if I put string, nothing is happening. Um, but what I could do is that um, instead of like, you know, um, having a button, I can make it even more, um, even more interactive by um, have putting uh, like an event handler to this key press. So what I'm gonna do is decompose this function and then let add call is gonna be a function that is going to make a request to server. And then what I'm gonna do is key press. Um, it's going to uh, respond to key press event, I think. jQuery should have key press um, event handler function. Yes. Uh, and then just call this function. And then I'm gonna have the same thing for B as well. So what's gonna happen is that I, I don't need the um, button anymore. Um, it's going to, whenever I press something, it's going to send a server call um interesting okay haha <laughs> it's it's funny that it's going to send um something it's not going to send it like you know um the most recent value it's going to send um something before um something before like I type something it's probably because I'm using key press uh, event handler instead of instead if I use key up which means that um, the number is typed already so key press is um, basically it's before I think it's before the number is displayed so if I change the key up now it's gonna get the right function. So 1 plus 12 is 13 and so forth. Okay, and then you can see how the network traffic has been working. Um, looking at uh, from this tab, typically it takes two milliseconds, which is pretty good because, you know, everything is local and then my server is being uh, running is so local, so there's no, like, not much to do. One thing that I could possibly do is to create this random delay in the server side. Um, so let me actually create this random delay. Um, I'm going to do it some more elegant way to do it. So set timeout.
three seconds delay. So what's going to happen is that it's going to call this um, function, callback function after three seconds. So it's going to write a response later. So, so let's see what happens. So um, I'm going to restart the server and then restart. Uh, so I'm going to type one and three. Oh, it's pretty quick. Oh, that's because I made the change in the get post instead of get at get. So here I'm going to say two seconds, refresh the, like restart the server. One, three. Okay. Server error. Okay, a lot of errors. <laughs> I have some typo here. So sorry for being too fast, but like because like ser server side programming is not something that we want to look at. Um, so I'm deliberately doing faster. Let's say I got rid of um, R. Okay, last time. So three, five, four, and then it's going to take two seconds to get the response. And then you can see it's 2.01 second. So 45. After two seconds, it's going to update. Eight. But the cool thing is that the the web page is responsive. Like even though server is doing heavy computation, like you know, like it's simulation of heavy computation, even when it's like waiting for the response, I can still use this um, website. So that's like much better user experience as opposed to um, as opposed to like not being able to interact with the website. Okay, so the last thing that I want to show is to use post method uh, instead of get method. So in the post method, I would have to um, use post. And then in this case, I can send the data instead of encoding them in URL. Um, I will be able to send the data. I'm going to send an object. And then this was like predetermined. Um, B. So in this case, like, you know, these data was not part of URL, so it, it's more secure. Um, function. Yes, I think that should solve it. Let's see. Oops. Four, four, not found. Okay. It's supposed to be at post. Okay. One, two. It got responses, but then something is wrong. Let me stop at this point. Oh, it's because it is supposed to be answer, I think, because in the server, I used result here, but I used answer here. So. One, two, and let's check out the data. Answer is no. Interesting. Why is it no? 
So um post request received and then it has A and B. Interesting. I don't know why it's not happening. But I don't want to come finish the lecture with in not working code. So let me debug it for a moment. So let's look at the data. Answer is no. Let's get rid of the delay. Maybe because maybe I have to re restart the server. Let's let me restart the server. Um, one and two. Oh, okay. I see. I see what's happening. Like the. Uh, like it was like sending the, the very first request, which was I typed one and then the second was no, so that um, that was actually the right uh, result. So I'm using post method in this case. And then you can imagine that, you know, um, post method is more secure. Um, one thing that I should have shown you is um, why you don't want to use um, get method for private data um, before we break. So let me go back to the form and then let me create a, uh, another um, so this was the form example. Oops. where I'm going to create a password type um, um, password type input. So where is form? Okay. So now I have password. Send the, um, and then nice thing about input password type is that whatever I type, is going to be replaced with this dot. But then remember that I'm using get method if I submit it. And then you can see that you'll be able to see what I typed as a password. So this is clearly a reason why you don't want to use get method for any kind of like private sensitive data, like credit card number or something, you know you would have to use post method for this. But again, like, you know, form, uh, I cannot, uh, post method requires server, so I was not able to demonstrate it, but, you know, this is like, you know, one demonstration where um, how get method and post is different. If you use post method, we don't get these URL parameters. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, I haven't prepared quiz yet, but I may. So please check for the check for the announcement, just in case. So, so if I create quiz for today, I'm gonna announce um, in Canvas so that um, you can solve it, and then it's probably uh, probably going to be due on uh, Monday night. So yeah, Monday night, right before Tuesday. Okay, so thanks everyone. I hope this got um, like we got some hang of how to interact with server, and then like we open, we've been looking at the front end part. We haven't done anything about the server side, but next time we're gonna look at server side by just creating this very simple Node.js server program. And then hopefully you should be able to 
create something like this and then create a local host server, which is basically, you know, when you have like a Linux server, when you log in using SSH, and then if you run this function, now that web server is going to be, uh, like your server is going to be listening to this particular port. So, <clears throat> okay. So thank you everyone. Uh, have a good day.